Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside that weather window. And today, lots of cloudiness ahead of another storm system that's headed our way. And that will move through late in the afternoon, early evening snow pretty much tonight and into our overnight hours. But this is a look this afternoon. You can see the clouds rolling in from our SkyFi Tower camera. This is from Omi Gardens and, of course, the beautiful Wenatchee Valley. But snow is on the way. And as far as amounts go around north central Washington, about two to three inches, maybe two to four inches here in the Wenatchee area, up to four inches for you folks in Chelan as well. And that goes for up north in the Okanagan Valley to Omac and over into Winthrop, about three to four inches. Pretty much a steady amount throughout the state. Uh, folks around Wilbur and the darker blue areas on that map will receive the most snow out of this system. It's going to come in two punches, one this afternoon and then one again late tonight. And as far as snow accumulation goes for the season, we're in pretty darn good shape. You can see the color graph at the bottom right part of your screen. In Wenatchee, we are at about the 24-inch stage. That's that goldish or orange color that you see by Wenatchee. But boy, look at those or uh, deep oranges and red colors. That is where we've seen the biggest amounts of snow so far this season. But our neighbors over to the east in Moses Lake, not quite as much as what we've seen so far this season. But we'll all add to that total over the next 24 hours. Your complete weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The Wenatchee School Board hears from the public regarding the district's $5 million budget deficit. Driving under the influence, the cause of an injury traffic accident on Highway 2 about three miles west of Wenatchee last night. And a Brewster woman was scammed out of more than $200,000 by someone claiming to work for Microsoft. But first, we begin tonight. Wenatchee School Board President Sonny Hemphill announced at last night's board meeting that Paul Gordon has accepted the offer to serve as Wenatchee School District Superintendent. Gordon is currently the superintendent at Glen Ellen School District in Illinois. Gordon was one of three finalists for the top school district post who visited Wenatchee last week. The offer and contract will be finalized by the board at their March 12th meeting. Gordon will be taking over for Brian Flonis, who is stepping down at the end of this year after serving 19 years as superintendent of the Wenatchee School District. After hearing for almost two hours from parents, teachers, and students making their cases for sparing teachers, programs, and athletics, the Wenatchee School Board got down to the business of budget cutting Tuesday. The board approved an option presented by Superintendent Brian Flonis that spares athletics, halftime counselors, and librarians from cuts. The district is facing a $5.2 million budget shortfall, and the plan presented by Flonis means many teachers who retire or resign will be replaced by moving existing staff members. The cuts amount to $4.5 million for next year, with the remaining money coming from reserves. State troopers say charges are pending in an injury traffic accident on Highway 2 about three miles west of Wenatchee. It happened last night shortly before 9 p.m. when 30-year-old Seth Chambers of Seattle lost control of his Honda CRV. Chambers was injured when the vehicle went over the guardrail and struck a bridge pillar. He was transported to Confluence Health for treatment. Troopers say Chambers was driving under the influence. A Brewster woman was scammed out of more than $200,000 by someone claiming to work for Microsoft. According to Okanagan County Sheriff Tony Hawley, the unidentified woman reported the scam to the sheriff's office on February 19th, saying someone named Samuel convinced her to make three wire transfers from her account to an account in India. The man first offered services for her computer, then convinced her he had advertently transferred money to her bank account, threatening her until she made the three wire transfers. The sheriff's office says the incident is still under investigation. Coming up next, a $17 billion 10-year transportation package introduced in the state Senate would raise the gas tax six cents a gallon in Washington state. 4th District Republican Congressman Dan Newhouse was the only House member from Washington State to vote against blocking President Trump's declaration of a national border emergency. And Congress has approved major public lands legislation affecting North Central Washington. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Dear 
are Mary maids. Please clean the kitchen. And the cabinets, and floors, and the chairs. And I wish you could clean the dog. <sighs> Colin is now feeding himself. Thanks, Megan. Hi, Megan. No worries. We got it all cleaned up. Let's hope Colin gets past the spaghetti flinging stage soon. Till then, we've got you covered. See you next time. Merry Maids. Golf Course is proud to announce their two new state-of-the-art full-swing golf simulators with over 80 courses of virtual golf to choose from year-round. Or try their laser shot simulated firearm program or gaming with football, basketball, and much more. Enjoy Highlander food and drink service from their full-service bar and grill in the comfort of their simulator room. Call the Highlander Pro Shop to book your time at 884-4653. That's 884-4653. Welcome back. In another news, a $17 billion 10-year transportation package introduced in the state Senate would raise the gas tax since six cents a gallon and impose the nation's first ever carbon-free, uh, carbon fee rather, something voters have twice rejected. The proposal was made by Steve Hobbs, a Lake Stevens Democrat and chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. But as the 12th District State Senator Brad Hawkins told NCW Life's Cal Fitzsimmons, the legislation probably won't be passed this session. Well, I think in the past, um, voters have shown that they're not necessarily opposed to raising the gas tax for transportation projects. Uh, but at the same time, the voters have shown more than once that they're not in favor of imposing a carbon tax. Uh, do you think it's palatable to lump the two together and not go against the will of the voters? I don't believe this proposal by Chair Hobbs is is viable uh, this session. Uh, I think many of us believe it's in a way a conversational starter, but I, I think Chair Hobbs feels that anything is possible. There are some, as I mentioned, some significant investments to be made in our transportation infrastructure. There's also been a recent uh, court decision related to culverts for fish that are currently blocking uh, some fish passage opportunities. And so the state really needs to generate some revenue to, to do these things. Um, in the past, there just been this large reliance on the gas tax as the revenue source, but with the proliferation of electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, uh, more fuel efficient vehicles, there is actually a little bit less gas consumed over time. And so the state either needs to increase those taxes, drive down the costs of the transportation projects or find some additional source of revenue. And I think perhaps, I can't speak for Senator Hobbs, but perhaps that's what he's, he's trying to do. He, he foresees the possibility of some sort of carbon fee at some point in the future. And he wants to make it known that if there is gonna be one, whether it's this session or in future session, that the revenues get redirected to transportation projects. Fourth District Republican Congressman Dan Newhouse was the only House member from Washington State to vote against blocking President Trump's declaration of a national border emergency. The measure passed the Democratic-controlled House on Tuesday, 245 to 182. Representatives Kathy McMorris-Rogers of Spokane and Jamie Herrera-Butler of Battleground were among 13 Republicans who joined Democrats in voting, voting against Trump's declaration. 8th District Representative Kim Schreier voted in favor of rescinding Trump's order. Both McMorris-Rogers and Herrera-Butler said they still both support the president's call for a wall on the southern, southern border, but were concerned about checks and balances on executive privileges. 
In other news, Congress has approved major public lands legislation affecting North Central Washington. The Natural Resources Management Act, which included a provision to withdraw 340,000 acres in the Methow Valley from consideration for mining, passed the House Tuesday night. Senator Maria Cantwell co-authored the original bipartisan bill that she said includes significant wins for public lands across Washington state. This legislation includes four provisions that will help firefighters improve their safety and effectiveness and bring state-of-the-art technology to combating wildfires. These provisions will help firefighters and communities, and we need to do everything we can as we see fire seasons extending and having more catastrophic events. We need to give communities and firefighters every tool possible. Cantwell's public lands package includes the Wildfire Management Technology Advancement Act, which will increase safety for wild, wild land firefighters through the use of GPS and drone aircraft. The measure is now awaiting the president's signature. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Hi, Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. When you think of Alpine Air in Wenatchee, think of professional, friendly customer service for all your heating and cooling needs. Alpine Air partners with carrier manufacturers of some of the best heating and air conditioning equipment available today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Visit our store in Wenatchee, meet our people, see our shop. Heat and air call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Hello, and what is up? Welcome to Career Shift Business Edition. I've got three choices. Certificate, Associates, and Bachelors. I'm going Associates. And I'm enrolled. Stay alert, this game was pretty fast. Whoa, huh, exams almost did me in. I'm back on track and picking up speed. And I'm in the home stretch. Degree complete, and I'm ready to go to work. Charter helped me make that career shift. Your turn. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, serving North Central Washington, is proud to offer the finest heating and cooling air quality products along with prompt and professional customer service since 1984. Regardless of the temperature outside, Arctic is here for you. Arctic offers a variety of services, residential and commercial heating, air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, we continue our series on the historic Haran House with the NCW Magazine. Current owner Nevio Tontini gives us his background and explains the situation behind the potential demolition of the home. Nevio Tontini purchased the Haran property in the early 2000s, hoping to turn it into a bed and breakfast, but the fate remains uncertain. I'm uh, Nevio Tontini, uh, we're at the Haran House, which I purchased in uh, 2006. I grew up in uh, Southern California and Riverside, California, and migrated to San Francisco while going to college. I became a child psychologist down there and worked with abused kids for a number of years. Finally burned out and needed a change in life and moved up here and became a builder. I loved the look of the house. I mean, it was a nice piece of property when I bought it. Uh, still, from the restaurant days, I'd been out here in the restaurant several times. But uh, I'm a builder, and to me, there was two plus acres of land, so I had lots of uh, thoughts of doing things with it. Possibly do end up doing a B and B or an event center or other development. And uh, as it turned out, nothing has happened over the years. I had a caretaker staying here watching the property, uh, and that's where we're at. I always love the setting down here. I love to listen to the geese fly through. I've seen deer here. It's, you know, it's a pretty setting. You, you get noise from the highway up above, but other than that, it's very tranquil down here. 
As he worked to maintain the Haran house, Tontini says he knew Mike Haran's legacy was significant in the Wenatchee Valley. Apparently, uh, he was a go-getter. He had uh, moved around quite a bit to different areas. I think he lived in Roslyn for a while, moved here. Uh, he was very well known for his uh, methods of farming apples. There were no relics from that era still here other than the house itself. I loved the, uh, the gingerbread on the outside. And being a former carpenter, I, I marvel at the kinds of things they were able to do during that era with no electrical power. So I, I think a lot of that is uh, something that's precious to me. And the windows have been taken out. They're, they have an asbestos glaze on them, so I've had the asbestos guys in here looking at what needs to be done. But uh, it, it, it's been about a three-year period where I've been discussing moving the house with one lady here in town who owns a B&B, historical type B&B, &B, and she has some property on Easy Street, and we just haven't been able to come to terms. The money isn't there for the kind of thing she wants done. Uh, I've met with Rory Turner and different groups about possibly moving the house, and I don't think that's going anywhere either at this time. I think if somebody has the money to try and restore it, I think it would be very worthwhile. The movers say it is movable, uh, pretty spendy, but is movable. They'd have to cut off a section of the house to move it up the streets and someone would have to provide a foundation to, to set it on and then another two to three hundred thousand dollars after that to do restoration and if someone has that kind of desire i hope they step forward time to save the property is running out as tontini begins to consider demolition i i don't think i ever thought truly of putting in the kind of money it would take to restore this property to be habitable and to be worthwhile to the community. Uh, I'm more of a builder. I look at the land. I see the land's value. I see the possibility of condos down here, very nice quiet area. <laughs> I guess if I uh, can't get it moved, which it seems like I can't at this point, then my next step is to go through a demolition phase and to sell the property. I hate being seen as a bad guy if the house gets torn down, I think, but everything has its, uh, its time. Like me, <laughs> time is getting short. Up next, we'll talk with Rory Turner, who took a special interest in helping attempt to save the historic home, along with several locals who cherish their memories with the property. Now for a check of your north central Washington weather forecast before we get to those details and there's more snow on the way. Let's take a look outside our weather window from our Omi Garden Sky Fi Tower camera. Still lots of snow in the Wenatchee Valley. More on the way. You can see now the foothills uh, became inundated this afternoon by cloud cover just ahead of our first storm that will move through. Then we'll see another quick hitting storm move through late tonight into our early morning hours. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, that could give us the potential for about two to four inches of new snow when we wake up tomorrow morning just in time for that morning commute. High temperatures today still well below normal here in the Wenatchee area. In fact, 18 degrees below where we should be for this time of year. 46 is our normal, 28 uh, unofficially our high today. Our overnight low still well below where we should be for that as well. Uh, 17 degrees, 30 is our normal low. 62, our record high just three years ago in 2016 and our record low in 1993 at 12 degrees. No new precipitation, really just a trace. Picked up a few snowflakes uh, after midnight and still at 20.8 inches of snowfall so far this season. That goes back to December 1st. Sunrise this morning was at 645 and the sun set this afternoon at 543. Now taking a look at that surface loop tonight at 10 o'clock, we will see snow. The snow uh, should fall throughout our evening hours and then actually
actually intensify. It's swinging up from the south and moving right into north central Washington. Once again, we could see two, three, maybe even four inches on the ground as we wake up on Thursday. Things will get better though. We'll start off mostly cloudy for Thursday, turn mostly sunny by this after in the afternoon on Thursday, and we will see most of the storminess move off to our northeast and our east. High temperatures in the lower 30s. That will be an improvement for today by Friday and to end our work week at one o'clock. Mostly sunny skies. Winds really no problem out there. The problem is cool temperatures. Once again, we're seeing another shot of cold air moving down from the north and that will lower once again our high temperatures as we move into the weekend. Fog to start our Saturday and then partly cloudy skies in the afternoon on Sunday. Lots of sunshine, but it will be cool with high temperatures only in the upper 20s, but almost all of the Pacific Northwest and the inland Northwest will be cloud free as we make our way through the weekend and even into Monday. Sunny skies, but still unseasonable cold on Monday. This is at one o'clock, but you can see this trough dipping down into southern Oregon. Not much change for Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, but we are seeing now a large area of low pressure moving up from the southwest. If that takes over our upper uh, le level airflow, we could transition back into a warmer temperature regime and we'll have to see what it holds uh, what it holds for us about a week from today, midweek next week into the end of the next week. We may see a break from all these cold temperatures. Now let's take a look at your quick lube and tune forecast. Tonight a much better low temperature of 22 degrees expected. Once again as you make that commute tomorrow morning be extra careful. We could see anywhere from 2 to 4 inches of new snow. Mostly sunny, slightly warmer for your Thursday. A little bit warmer even for Friday with mostly uh, sunny skies. It will remain well below normal then and then that reinforcing shot of cool air moves in for Saturday and Sunday with highs only in the upper 20s and will stay in the upper 20s to kick off our next work week on Monday and Tuesday with lows on the chilly side, mainly into the middle teens. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight. Sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, I'm Cordell Schroeder, owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. I'm working today. I have got some work to do today. Don't forget, I've got some work for you today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Thanks. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in our community. New beginnings feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Be a job creator. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. It's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. Now, today is the day when the real state tournaments get underway in Yakima and Spokane for our purposes. The Cashmere Boys have a state 1A game, Kingsway Christian, the first game of the day for the Bulldogs, 17 and 6 after a rough loss to Zilla in the regional round last Saturday. Coach Levi Hyen says his young club has shown an ability to bounce back and learn from their setbacks this season. The losses we've had this year have actually helped us. Uh, I think you know we we lost a tough game at Royal, and we came back a few days later and and got beat by, up at OMAC. And those games really refocused our boys as far as we were able to watch the film and say, see, if you don't box out, if you don't play solid defense, this is what happens. And and our boys refocused and 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 really bought in at that point, you know, and th they started to see the importance of it. So we'll we'll take a look at this for sure, and we'll say you know see the difference between pressure and not pressure. So it's going to be a learning experience. Our kids are young and. Their kids. 
Now, Kingsway Christian came into the game 16 and 8, ranked 13th in the state's final RPI poll. The Knights coming off a 71 52 regional win against Overlake to make the state tournament today in the Sun Dome. Hyan says despite the loss to Zilla, Cashmere's ultimate goal is still reachable. Our goals are still set to the top. You know, we still have a chance to be number one. That's going to be our goal. And until that's an op not an option, then we move to the next goal. So, um, yeah, we're just going to keep pressing forward on Wednesday and see what happens. So, Cashmere Kingsway Christian, that game underway for our 5 o'clock broadcast, obviously because I need to get down to Yakima. We'll pull the curtain back. This is being pre-recorded earlier today, uh, but you get the gist. Okanagan, by the way, plays Bellevue Christian 7-15 tonight. Both games must win or the season is over. We'll have reports on our Facebook page and tell you more about that coming up. Spokane's Veterans Memorial Arena is the site for the state 2B tournament beginning today. As we talked about, you know, the, the real deal. Brewster girls facing a loser out game today against Rainier. The Bears 19 and 4 on the season earned their way into today's game with a two point victory over Mampton last weekend. The Mountaineers are 21 and 3, licking its wounds after being slaughtered in the regional round by number one ranked Wakayakum 74 to 13. That was just four days ago. Brewster and Rainier will tip it up tonight at 9 o'clock in Spokane. The Cashmere girls have to wait until tomorrow to play their quarterfinal state 1A game in the Sun Dome. The Bulldogs won't have to wait too long to find out. However, uh, their opponent was playing this morning in a first round game. That's Zilla and Annie Wright. The winner of that game will take on Cashmere. By the way, if you're worried as a Cashmere fan about playing that uh, early morning game, historically Cashmere 2 Two and zero oh. when playing the nine o'clock morning game at the state tournament. They're three and one overall playing in the morning hours. The Brewster boys begin their tournament at the state two B tournament tomorrow, and the Bears await the winner of today's game in Spokane between Oroville and Willapa Valley. Brewster also in the uh, time slot tomorrow early. That's at nine o'clock in the morning. So that kind of sets things up for you. I will be down in Yakima following the plight of Cashmere boys and girls. So be sure and watch. Watch for highlights and reports here on the NCW Life Channel in the mornings with Dan Kuntz on Wake Up with Angie Valley. Of course, we'll have him here in the evening newscast. Also, be sure to follow all the action on our website at ncwlife.com and just do a search for NCW Life on Facebook, and I'll be providing live updates from the tournament as we go right here on our Facebook page at NCW Life. So that's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. i got to get going to Yakima. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric, and look forward to your coverage. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. CW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's Learn, Guada TV, Street Talk and Other Stuff, The 12th District, Life with Lisa, and The Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Live Channel is your local TV station. When you have to get there on time and looking good, call Fast Friendly Reliable AC Checker 663 Taxi. Available 24 7, AC Checker Taxi has the industry's only on time or it's free guarantee for your pre booked call. Some conditions apply. Call 663 8294. AC Checker 663 Taxi. Schedule your ride ASAP or book up to a year in advance online at acchecker.com. American Classic Checker Taxi 663 Taxi. That's 663 8294. Thank you.
Are you watching me? If you're watching me and you are a business owner in North Central Washington, your potential customers could be seeing your TV commercial right now. With Solely on Broadcasting, TV advertising is effective and affordable. Place your ads on the network best suited to your potential customers or get top of mind awareness with 16 cable networks, including NCW Life, your local TV channel. Give Solely on Broadcasting a call at 888-2020 today to see how easy and affordable it is to advertise on TV.